3D is back in Photoshop, but it's very different than what it was before, but we can still do some really cool things in it. Right now, I'm going to show you how to integrate Substance 3D Viewer with Photoshop. We can have a quick but in-depth look at setting up things like lighting, shadows, texturing, and uh, obviously sharing all of this back to Photoshop to composite with an image. All right, let's see how we can use 3D in Photoshop. So right now I'm using the Photoshop beta, which you're going to need for this. And if you go under the Creative Cloud setting here, choose Apps, and then you'll see an option here that says Beta. Grab the Photoshop beta. You also want to grab the Substance 3D Viewer beta, which currently is free right now. So once you've got those, let me show you where you can get free 3D assets. So if we go under here and you'll see 3D and AR, you'll see Substance 3D Assets and then open in browser. And you'll see that we can go through here and there's all kinds of things. We can get materials, we can get models, we can get lights. And if you just show all, and as you scroll through, you'll see there's different textures and different things that you can grab for free and download. Let's just do models right now. We're going to grab a model of some furniture that we can put into that scene. All right, and it looks like we've got some nice chairs. Let's grab this one here. This Victorian couch looks kind of nice. So I'm just going to download this. And once you've downloaded it, you'll see it's an FBX file. I can just drag that into my Photoshop document. Notice it creates a new layer. And I'm just going to hit Enter to apply it. I can move this around, but I can't rotate it here. So what I want to do in order to position this is either just double click right here on the 3D layer or the smart object, or we could go under here and we could choose edit contents. Let's just choose edit contents. Same thing as double clicking. And now this loads Substance 3D Viewer. Now I can position this. If I drag, I can move it around. But notice down here, you can see if we use a three button mouse, we can do some different things with the different buttons on the mouse. So we can position this. And currently I'm actually on a laptop. I'm using the, just the two fingers here. If we want to push this further away, we go up under the view settings and we can change the perspective, change the field of view push that back a little bit and then just position it however we want it in 3d space so here's the nice thing if I choose to Photoshop so when I go back to Photoshop it's repositioned that couch it looks like I think it needs to be a little bit bigger so the nice thing is I can just go in here and I can just play around with this and position it and keep working on it and each time I just hit to Photoshop and now it updates all right, let's see what else we can do. Let's go back to Substance. See, the lighting is coming from over here from this window, and it's kind of hitting there. But on this, the lighting is coming from a different direction. So we can change that if we go under the light here. So right now, I'm going to rotate the lighting. All right, so we can also choose different types of lights. If we sit under the light preset, we've got a studio, an exterior, so you see here we can go in here and we can change the different types of lighting. Now you could load your own in here and set up some custom lighting. And these comes from HDR images. So this is HDR lighting. And as you can see here, we can rotate it. We can change the position of it. Get it to match our scene a little bit better. Now we can ground plane enable if we turn that on. What that will do is it will give us shadow. Notice now we have shadow happening. So we were in the composition where we were just kind of positioning things. We've done that. We went here under the environment where we could set up our lighting. And then we also have the ability to go under appearance where we can do things like add textures. Now let's have a look and see what we can do here. So notice the cushions are a different part here than the base frame. And if we look on here, we can see that we already have a texture on there. Notice as I tap it, see how it highlights it? And we see an orange outline around it. And notice here we can make it less or more metallic, which will just kind of affect some of the shine on here. And we can make this more rough so it looks more textured, starting to turn it, you know, look more like a velvet kind of a look here. Now, if we go under the base surface here, 
we can change the color. So if we want more of a red cushion, we can kind of apply that. And of course, if we wanted, we could also change this to different types of texture. So we can click on the material textures here and notice we've got different types of fabric. We've got metal, paint, paper, plastic, wood. So why don't we go back here and maybe we'll add velvet. So what we need to do is just click and drag. And now I can replace all instances, which will replace the instances of this particular texture. If I chosen all, it would have replaced everything in the entire model. And now if we look under this velvet, we've got options that we can change like the color. If we want to go back to the red again, which for some reason I seem to think the red velvet looks really good in this room, we can set that up. Let's take that metallic down a little bit, increase the roughness and bring down the Charlie Sheen a little bit. And you know what? I make this red a little darker. It's not quite the shade of red I like. There we go. That looks better. And let's send that to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, you can see right there that it's starting to come through. Let's go back to Substance. I'm going to give this a little bit more, just a little bit more of a sheen. And I'm going to keep that sheen color. Let's set that to a lighter red. And bring down the shimmering just a little bit. And notice all these little settings we can change. And this is going to change the way this looks. At any point, we can tap here to ray trace render it. And this will start to make it look a little bit better. And then there's other parts we could change in here. Let's have a look at the other materials. Let's do a metal. Let's take a brass and we're going to apply that to the rest of the object. Notice how I'm on the rest of that object. I'm going to tap here and look at this. Now we have this brassy kind of a look on there. And I think that looks kind of cool, but maybe just a little much. So let's go under the brass. We can change the settings and let's turn off our ray tracing. So we could just move a little quicker here and let's make it a little rougher. All right, and let's have a look at a quick render. Nice. Let's send that to Photoshop and notice it updates. So the other things we can do in here is if we go under the files, we can bring in our own models, which I've done another tutorial. I'll link to that one where I, I did show you how to do the model. And also I showed you this option here which is when we're literally creating 3D models from text. So say we have this model right now, and I wanted to just composite into a scene. We could do that. We could choose 3D model to image. You've got to agree the first time. And let's do Victorian ballroom. And let's just generate just to show you the sort of things we can do. And here we go. We've got this couch. So we can use this couch and generate this image around this 3D model, which of course we can change the position of it. We can change the angles and whatnot. So now we can composite 3D objects into Photoshop once again. And because it's on a separate layer, you know, we can do our own, you know, highlights, dodging and burning or whatever, and retouch it and get it exactly how we want it. So as you can see, there's a lot we can do there, but there's much more when it comes to the generative 3D. So check out my video right here that goes in depth and shows you how to do that as well as working with your own models. So drop a comment underneath and let me know what you think about this integration and also if you learned anything in this video. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my videos. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.